lecturing here on campus today. Correct. What are you speaking about? What I'm going to talk about is my life as a foreign correspondent in Afghanistan and Pakistan and how I was kidnapped and held prisoner by the Taliban in the tribal areas of Pakistan and a little bit about what happened afterwards. What, so, What happened afterwards? You can divide these things into two parts. Everything that happens in prison and then all that happens afterwards. The Taliban contacting me here, everything with the government. A journalist's job never ends and it's the aftermath of and it's hard to really, it's hard to get into it. I'm going to do that later today. All that happens there doesn't stay there. It comes back here. So I'm going to talk about both. How, how has your job as a journalist in Afghanistan, how has it impacted you personally uh, back home? I know that's a loaded right. question, but the, what's you know, the number one way that, that it has influenced you as, as a human being? After, after after what happened, yes. I'd say the first thing is isolation. I was not allowed to talk to anybody for two years. There were lives at stake. The U.S. government was heavily involved in this. I had to protect a lot of people. I couldn't talk to anybody, therefore I had to sublimate everything and became very corrosive inside. You have to worry about because, and as a journalist now, because so many people did so much to save my life, and I was the next journalist kidnapped in Pakistan after Daniel Pearl, the Wall Street Journal reporter who was killed in 2002. It was almost six years to the day. And so a great many people moved heaven and earth to present a sec prevent a second Daniel Pearl. As a result of that, and because of this enormous responsibility I have, I almost have to operate a little bit with one hand behind my back. I cannot speak freely anymore. And I have to start to learn how to do that. And I have to quit being a victim. You coming back here, it, you said it's kind of a homecoming. Right. How so? It's like coming home and it's easy to give a lecture and it's easy to talk in different parts of the country. But when I come here, it becomes emotional because this is where I started. This is where, and I'm going to talk a bit about this today, going to journalism school, taking other classes in political science and anthropology that gave me the impetus, gave me the idea to start going out into the world. And this is where I really became, at the very beginning, a journalist. And so I'm coming back to the very point from which I started, and it becomes quite emotional. Talk about what happened when you first walk up the, stair the staircase. Just I'm going to get really emotional. I really will. Um, I came to Oregon on a track scholarship. And I walked up here today, and I saw a fellow runner part of the Oregon track team in the 19, late 1960s. We both ran the 800, or 880 then, 800 meters together, and I hadn't seen him in years. And what it showed was the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the deep friendship and respect that we had for one another still exists. And it made me feel very emotional just to see him there. And I will be emotional, I know, when I talk later today. Why do you think that you still get emotional after all these years and after all that you've been through? I'm more emotional now than I was before because what happened was everything broke down in that prison and I had to go into the deepest part of myself and to look at things, confront things, deal with things that as you get older when the, when the scars build up and the scales are there they all fell away and I came back and I'm much, I learned humility, I learned what I am in the deepest part of myself and what is truly important. Love, friendship, family. Deep down at the very heart, so much of that is here in the Northwest and here at Oregon. And walking into the EMU, where I haven't been, and I don't want to say this, probably almost 40 years, to walk in there and see that nothing had changed and then to see my friend Wade Bell. It's emotional. But you have been able to find that peace and that, and that happiness again. 
That's the key. That's the key. Not yet.